stoked up there. Painting with Menoth John is presented in Super Legitivision. Super Legitivision, the future of podcasting. It's dot com. Hello, I'm Menoth John. And I'd like to welcome you. First of all, let me take just a moment to thank you for allowing me back into your homes. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your miniatures and paint along with us each week. Let's go over to the canvas here and, and let's get started. I believe, I believe, every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. I believe, I believe. Every day's a good day when you paint. I believe, I believe, it'll bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. Let's build a happy little cloud. Let's build some happy little trees. There are no limits here. You start out by believing here. You can almost paint with anything. All you have to do. Um, you'll recognize this little fella. He got speed painted on the last episode. And uh, he turned out really good. The, the big difference since the last time you saw him is I put a base on him. And he's got all of his little, uh, his ceiling has been done. And I think what's hysterical about this model is how short he is and how yes. appropriately short he is in combination with the, tr with the little grass and stuff like that. It's like he's just poking around, bumping around in the, in the, in the tall grass, doing the best he can. So that, I think that's pretty hilarious. And oh, then, yeah. and then I used guys, and this is, man, my phone is fucking blowing up. Um, I'm gonna go into silent mode here. All right, so um, here on, if you notice on his helmet, and I'm gonna point it out, this is a way that you can use um, gl uh, varnishes to give it a give you an effect that you want to pull off. So in this case. I was using the uh, gloss varnish on his on his little spectacles here, his little goggles, and on his tongue, and to a small extent on his eyes, mostly on his tongue and his goggles, just to give it a little bit of highlight because to make it look wet. Because I'm, you know, a Gorax tongue is not going to be the driest thing in the universe. It's going to be a little wet. Um, is so, and then I'm really happy with how the goggles turned out with. The, uh, the the darker blue in the bottom with a little bit of white on top. Really turned out slick. Pretty happy mm -hmm. with old Shiver here. Um, the other model I worked on this week and completed this week was Boss McCorn. Now, you remember uh, Sam McCorn and the Devil Dogs. Of course. This is Sam McCorn basically on her own doing her thing. Oh. And, um, so, and I didn't know that right away until I kind of started reading up about her. I'm pretty happy with where this model turned out. Yeah, it looks good. Um, and she's got... I'm, I'm kind of having a ginger fetish, to be honest. Um, everybody's getting ginger hair these days. Um, so I, I gave her some nice ginger hair. Once again, coming back with a little bit of the, the goggle action here. I'm sorry, it's a little hard to see. Um, I would urge you all to expand your monitors. Um, but... Uh, per, real happy with the little generator detail here. I think that turned out really, really nice with the uh, the light on the outside, a darker color and a little light in the middle. Um, the devil dog symbol I think turned out pretty nice. It's a little hard to see on here, but I did. It's got it's got an interesting little fade from a dark brown to a light brown. I think that turned out really nifty. I'm very happy with the way the shading worked on the on the gauntlets. I think it. Uh, I was going to do some battle damage on it, but I decided to keep it on the clean side. So just kind of just that that average dirt you would see, rather than a lot of chipping and things like that. I think that she would take care of her stuff, and uh, not quite as effective on the goggles. But if it's hard to believe, but the goggles are actually bigger on Shiver than they are on her, because um, because they occupy his head more. Yes. Uh, real happy with this detail. I don't know if you can see it here, but the uh, I like the darkness in here with the highlight on the sides. I just really think that it's it's a nice. You've got all this olive drab and brass and metals and stuff like that with this the warmth. 
And that's something that, uh, you know, Kathy and Seth have always kind of talked to us about is, is bringing that, that slightly different color to the, that, that warmth amongst the cool. And I tried, to, I tried to do that with here. And then she's got her boobies here. So there you go. She's also got a, uh, a crotch generator, which is kind of fun. Because if I had one of those, I would, I, would, I would have a crotch generator. You know? So there you oh, have that's it. That's very cool. I might have to pick that one up, John. Uh, it did is you know? I did not know. That, yes. That the Devil Dogs were the first mercenary unit I painted. I, John, I think you would find it to be a very rewarding model, to be honest with you. I really do. Um, the um, the I, I really think that um, that she is a, one of the more and and the little the little teddy bear I think is is super sweet. So this started out life as a uh, kind of a a rook, not a rucksack tan but yeah kind of, or a moldy ochre. And then I'm I I can't stress enough if you only buy one Minotaur airbrush paint, get this one. It's the irradiated yellow. It's thin, it's translucent, and it works so good for like making yellows pop really, really well. If you remember on Boomy 3, I used uh, the irradiated yellow on the uh, Signar uh, mm -hmm. Swan on the back. It, it incredibly. I think that uh, Cygnus yellow uh, from P3 tries to do it, but it's, it's a little bit thicker, and it's harder to, to thin out. This... The irradiated yellow comes out just perfect right out of the bottle. So, all right. So tonight, this guy. This is uh, Yuri 2. And the thing I love about Yuri 2 is he is one piece. That is one piece right there. Comes out of the box. <laughs> kind of old school. You glue it to the base, you're done. And he has a ton of detail and he has a battle bear skin on his back. And I am uncomfortable with that, John. Oh, shit. That is a battle bear because that is the exact same armor as what's on my, on my battle bears. And I am going to tell you that the battle bears are amongst my favorite models. So, uh, as always, we are going to be painting him from the inside out. That's what we do. We're going to start on the inside, and we're going to move our way out. So the first thing I think that we're going to do is he's got a fair bit of leather, and I'm going to start with his, his loincloth leather, leather and also his, his back leather here. He's got So the back of these bear skins has been tanned, so I need to pick, catch that up, and I want it to be a slightly different leather color than the crotch flap. So i got a bit of a decision to make. The belt will probably be... Uh, bloodstone red or whatever the fuck that is. Um, yeah, bloodstone. I'm thinking this should probably be blood tracker brown. So I'm going to grab that. Blood tracker brown is a tremendous color from P3. It is pretty translucent. So I'm going to take off the glasses so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And uh, it's a this is a it's a color that. I probably need to order a new one of, to be honest, because the cap is breaking. Yeah, I hate that. Um, so that's eh, okay. P three <clears throat> bottles are the only part of the P three paints I don't like. Yeah, the P three. Bless their hearts. Um, I do. I sure love their paints, and uh, so we're just gonna put a little bit of that over there and wet the palette. That's French, John. French. That's uh, that's French for thing you put paints on. Did you know Fair that? Enough. Were you aware? I so. was not aware. Oh, crap. Right. Why are we... So we're going to put that in here. I, I got some decisions to make on this model, John. And that's, you know, one of the things I look forward to this Wednesday, our little Wednesday get-together, if you will, um, is that you and I get an opportunity to uh, kvetch a little bit. Oh, John, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I lost your video. Or, or did I just change it? Oh, shit. There you go. All right, super sweet. It's back. Yay. Now we're going to get to see John hobbying it up. Well, I'm not going to hobby, but you wanted to talk about my... Uh, yes, my I'm sorry. I've been, ra I've been rambling on here, and I, now I need to get to the point. So John, John had... And, and I'm going to turn the show over to John here, to be honest. Sh um, should, 
I wish I had a better camera view where I focused just on you. Uh, no worries. But uh, John finished a uh, an Imperial Knight, and and John, I would like you to walk us through it because it, this is beautiful, and I'd like you to walk us through. This is a reclaimed model, so l walk us through while I do some paintings. Yeah, so I got this uh, second hand from uh, a guy who was selling it cheap when I uh, started in on these. Oh, and I can tell already where something got messed up. I'll fix that later. That feeling when you look down, like you suddenly see, like yeah, see <laughs> down here there's a little oh. That was just a little bit. Look, it's done. That was good. Ain't, ain't that painting where you look down and go, oh, shit, I missed that. Boom. So, yeah, second hand. So, the priming <laughs> job, you can't really tell through the camera, but the priming job on the legs is very chunky down here. It's very, it's got texture, and it shouldn't. Okay, fair enough. And then if you look at the back of this gun, there are no bits there. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. But I didn't notice that part until I started uh, painting them. And then on the top... I actually puttied in some holes where there were supposed to be more of these handles and stuff. Yeah. Because I didn't have any of these, actually. Uh, uh, one of our, uh, well, one of, one of our uh, brush heads, uh, Miles Healy. Yeah. Oh, I love that guy. I wish he was on. I wish he would come to the show more frequently. Yeah. But he has sent me uh, sent me some extra ones he had for a night that he was converting. So. Nice. Cool there. So yeah, so I got this second hand, worked on it, and then uh, I put it together and started painting it and realized that uh, you should not assemble this thing fully when you before you paint it. Fair enough. We talk about, we've talked about that on the show. There are certain models, especially big ones, that you just yep. need to walk away on that. Yep. These, uh, the arms and the shoulder pads, I would heartily suggest leaving off until last and painting them separately if at all possible. Uh, because they, you get really hard to get in there, and if I show the camera in there, you'll see parts that aren't really painted. But uh, also, these two bits, I was just trying to keep them off if you can. The uh, stubber and the uh, shield here. Yep. Because both of those came off from frequent getting hit while I was painting them. Okay. So uh, this, I can get this a little further up in the way. Um, so... Those are my two big takeaways. The other one is the model like this, I didn't necessarily start inside and out. I just sort of painted base colors and just started putting colors everywhere. And at a point, you start just focusing on a part. I started and I went, I got a bunch of colors everywhere. And then I went, all right, you know what? I keep hitting these arms and touching them. I can see paint rubbing off. So I start, I finished the arms and then I sealed the arms. Oh, and that's I went, interesting. Start working on like the back area here. And uh, now, when you sealed, sealed when you sealed pack. the arms, how what technique did you use there? Did you go with a, a tester dull coat spray on, or did you do a brush on sealer? Or what were, what was your preference on that one? Oh, John, I'm old school crazy. I brush on uh, seal everything. Yeah, I I I'm before I got my airbrush, that was exactly what I always did. I love brush on sealer, and folks, I am a huge fan of Vallejo's uh, mat brush on i've never had a single frosting incident with it yep that stuff right there i've had one it was black widow who i painted from Marvel crisis protocol but i think that was operator error and uh i'll tell you what a little uh touch up a little, little bringing up the color again with the uh, base paints again worked wonders she looks fine now but it go. is a pain in the ass and on a model this size you'd probably piss yourself but so yeah, I started doing that, and you see little wires here, just something to give it a little color here or there. Um, so it wasn't all just silver. But yeah, I just went bit by bit and started sealing them as I went. Wow. I'm going to go back over because the wash is a little blotchy at points, but you don't really notice it from a tabletop view. You know, When you look up close, you can see it's brush marks and all from the wash. Eh. But it looks kind of mottled almost. I, I actually like it because, it, to, your, to your point, it, it does have a bit of a mottled feel look to it and i think i like that yeah but yeah so this is just i mean and you be able if you look at it carefully you can tell that my painting got better in the meantime because i started this um in the last place i lived yep so two years ago and i just got to the point here where i was like i need to finish everything i started painting so i just grabbing everything i started painting and finishing them holy shit you mean there's a model out there that spent more time on the painting table than the hooch hauler uh, yeah, this guy did. I mean, that's hard yeah. to fucking believe. Actually, John, let me grab this one real quick. Amonozaki here 
I started painting when uh, Drop Zone Games was still around. They've been around for a while. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took me a while to actually get done with her, but, you know. I mean, it was kind of done. You could put it on a battlefield and be like, oh, yeah, John, that's fine. But it wasn't done done. So I'm very pleased to have, have him done, learn a lot of stuff from it, a lot of things you can do, a lot of little touch-ups I could do also. Uh, I mean, depends on what you want. I'll take a look at him on a battlefield in regular light. Um, not the only thing to worry about is that uh, this is one night, John. I'm going to have about three and a force at least. You know what? The knights are so cool. Um, they are absolutely amazing. You know, I, I watch uh, I watch a fair amount of Ash's channel, um, Gorilla Games Miniatures, mm-hmm. and uh, I've I've been lucky enough. I've actually, when I've gone to visit uh, Rich out in New York, I actually went out and uh, I got to meet Ash and play uh, play games with him and stuff. Ash is a super sweet guy, and uh, he and he has a a really nice. Uh, knights instead of knights, and I'll tell you what I'd love to see how he paints those things. I I would assume there's an airbrush involved at some point, but uh, just because the the colors are so even. But man, um, all right. So I've exhausted what I'm going to do with Blood Tracker Brown, and so now what I what I think I want to do is I I need to make it. I think Yuri is shall we say a gentleman of. Uh, a vintage. So I think he is a an older, uh, not a young man anymore. No. So what I what I'm thinking I want to do is I want his hair to be grayish. So that means I need to pick a contrasting color for all of the fur. So I think that a brown fur with graying hair is going to be the way to go. So that it pulls it out. But now I need to decide. <laughs> what the hell is this? Is this his beard? Or is that fur from a thing? Oh, that's tough to tell. Think this is beard. Yeah, I think he's supposed to have a magnificent beard. I think this is all beard. Now, the other thing is, what would be super cool and totally legit is if he was a ginger... And it was he was a graying ginger. Uh, well, that's going to be a painting challenge, and that is good. So I th- I think the way that a gray a ginger would go gray is you would have more ginger in here, going up to a lighter part in here. So I think if I wet blend a ginger hair color, starting up in here, and then starting like maybe down in here and coming up in here i'm just i'm kind of trying to work this through in my head i think while i work that through i will go for a grayish fur on the bear what do you think should i go gray or um, brown uh, i'm gonna throw you a curveball what yeah. about a black bear a black really bear. dark uh because you can do like a really black on it and then you could hit it with like a really dark brown high up that, that you can bring up just a little bit more and just get that sort of black bear sort of look. So what if I did a a dark like umbral umber for the for it and thinned it out and just see how the, the highlights work? Mm-hmm. And then I can come back maybe with um, even a null oil and yeah, darken um, and darken you, it a touch. Or if you want to go brown, I don't know if you have Rhinox Hide. Rhinox Hide is the go to dark brown of GW. Yeah, I don't have that. So but I yeah. think that a an umbral umber, which is oh, this is battlefield there's, there's battlefield brown. And then there's umbral umber. Now umbral umber has separated like a bitch, because that's what it does. Do you got a ball bearing to throw in there? Uh it's it. I don't know if I put one in here. I, when I was transferring over, I usually put a ball bearing in here, but I'm not hearing it. So, um, yeah, I always I have a bunch of them still, and I just throw one in whenever a paint's getting yep. bad. I don't put them in all the paints, but if I like, transfer bottles like you, or if I uh, notice it's getting bad, I throw it in. I'm oh, and uh, feeling... engineers, to answer your question, GW shades are the best. I. It's just they just are. Okay, so I'm gonna go umbral umber on this one. I'm just gonna put a little bit over. Whoa, that lot a lot came out that time. 
Um, and uh, Legionnaire yeah. says Umbral Umber is similar to Rhinox Hide, okay. which is good because that'd be right, so, that's a good dark, dark, dark brown. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a little bit of water over here. We're gonna put, honest to God, how wasteful. It's my my um, a lot of t when I transferred these uh, paints over into dropper bottles, a lot of the <laughs> dropper heads are getting stuck up in the top, and it just pulls off and I end up with like this pot. It's a lo long story, hard to tell. So we're going to start over here, and we're going to start with a medium brush. I'm going to go with a with a number one brush, and maybe a number... Actually, this might be a good time for a number two brush. Let's try a number two brush. We're going to start on the good back. Time number two. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you what. My Especially age, a, a good two. number two is worth its weight in freaking gold. All right, so we're going to just... And we're just going to take a little bit on there. We're just going to give it a little touch. And we're going to really emphasize the pulling out of... We're going, to, we're going to really spread this out. We're going to get our money's worth with this one. Because if we, if we coat it too hard, if we go too strong with it, we're not going to take a full advantage of the, uh, uh, of the, the sketch work and the uh, zenithal shading. And yep. this is... And this is a situation where the Zenithal shading pays for itself. We're going to get all up in this over here, and we're going to keep coming back to this area that we started. Why? Because that's where the heaviest amount of the umbral umber is. And we want to be very, very clear that we're going to do a, an even coat. If we have to come back and increase the color saturation, we can do that. But we're going to give it just a little touch of fudge everywhere. Now, yeah, you can it, always come back and add some more paint. You cannot easily take the paint away. We got to be careful up towards his up towards his head. Now, I see. I just noticed a detail here. Is there is a paw for the bear right here, and that is not his hair, because so, he, he has hair up at, all up in here. He's a long haired gentleman, and uh, so there's going to be some some uh, some interplay between. The the fur and see oh see that's where it was. They're hiding shit on me, John. They're hiding shit. They're doing stuff to me over here. They're, they're playing games. They're playing games with me. And um, what I just noticed was that the there's a paw here that is the bear, and there's a paw over here. That is the the breadth of that of that bear's skin. The rest is going to be his hair. It, well, that's good. That's why I like starting to put the base coat on because you really start to see what's what. And I'm going to tell you the the use, folks. If you are not zenithal shading your your models, you are missing out because you don't do that and you don't see all this detail. The zenithal shading really, really, really makes all this stuff pop out at you. <clears throat> and if you uh, if it's not something you want to do, if it's a lot of work, instead you can just take a gray and you can dry brush over the, and it'll I, bring out the details. The first level of Zenithal shading is done with my airbrush. The second is a dry brush with white. And, uh, and then after I do that, then what I do is I come back with the white ink and I, uh, I, I catch those, those t very highlights like this here on his bow and on the top of the stone and on his hair, that is all with, a very fine brush with the um, with, with with the white ink because I, pick up some white ink. I keep forgetting dude you do it is it is the best there is if you're if you are anticipating needing to paint something with some level of white to it it is the only way to fly oh well uh, funny note about that uh, knight is there's only white on two parts of him and those are the scroll works like on his chest and on his uh Reaper chainsword arm. Yeah, it is. No other white in the entire model. It is a game changer. And I thank Will Pagani for turning me on to it because he, in a, in a, tw in a uh, tweet, uh, he mentioned that uh, where has white ink been all my life? And as we do, we're like, white ink? What are you talking about? Exactly. And he was good enough to share what kind of white ink he was using and... The stuff that I love, and if you don't have a bottle of this, get it. It's easily available. It's the da Daller and Ron Rowney um, white ink. Oops, maybe if I held it like here. 
Dollar and Rowney. Other stuff. It is... FW. It, it is, is on my list. It is tremendous. I just unfortunately spent my uh, my hobby allowance already today. That's okay. It'll, your hobby allowance will come around again, buddy. And that will be a good spend. You'll look back on that and go, oh, my gosh. Let me tell you. So I got a little bit of thing going on here. I, I'm sure it's fur because it's um, – I got to get a little bit of that excess off. Remember, folks, if you've got when, – when you, if you're doing a little bit of detail work and you're worried about the amount of paint you got on your, on your, uh, your brush, just give it a little touch on your, paint, on your, uh, your paper towel. Just to kind of knock it off a little bit, take a little bit out of the way. You might waste a little bit, but I'm going to tell you, you're not going to waste that much. So, man, I'll tell you what. It's cranky. I love all these sites on Facebook for painting uh, noobs and stuff like that because they're trying, they're they're building their craft and all that kind of stuff. But for God's sakes, will somebody get to these kids and tell them not to use fucking craft paint on miniatures? Somebody. Somebody do them a steady because I feel like it's it's difficult for me to get all up ins and 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 try to help them because sometimes they get a little a little worked up. I'll tell you, this is a rewarding model. There is not a lot of time in this model, and it has come a long way. It looks like a really good one piece sculpt too. It's more dynamic than it should be for a one piece, and um, it's. It, 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 yes, it's a tiny little bit two-dimensional, but I'm going to tell you what. You go back to the old days of, of PP for, like, one-piece models, and they have... This is nothing like that. God, I wish that they had better leadership. <clears throat> hey, I'll be honest. You want two-piece models? Go and get the current Games Workshop Warp Spiders. I will point out that the same warp spiders that were available and used when I started the game in 1990 something. Boy, do I wish that if that privateer had <coughs> better leadership, I think they'd be a long ways ahead. I hate to say it, but I think that ship has unfortunately sailed. Yeah, you know you're right. You're 100 percent right. I mean, all their guys are all over making stuff at uh, Atomic Mass Games, pretty much. Yeah, the, good people there. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. The um, God damn, they, they 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 hit the ball a lot of the park too late. Riot Quest is amazing, and um, well, remember, uh, Company of Iron is amazing too, and it just didn't get yeah. supported. I I will so tell you, that having be the lesson, having played both games. Riot Quest is better than, than Company of Iron. Oh, yeah. But I will tell you, after watching, there, there are some people who are actually trying to make War Machine a thing again on, on YouTube and stuff. Oh, well, more power to them. Big Top Gaming. Shout out. Much respect. That game is unfucking playable a, a 75-point game of War Machine is not something I can even conceive of anymore. Jesus Christ, you push 150 models into the middle and wait until everything dies. It's just... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's in a weird spot. I mean, honestly, games in general are in a weird spot. You're going to find, with after this uh, whole pandemic's over, when we start meeting in gaming stores again and having good old times, we're going to have a lot less tolerance for the bullshit of it. Yeah, I mean... I, I, to, be, to be honest, I just... I can't wait to sit down with, uh, with Travis, with Dark Legacy... And a true believer, just a true believer, and and have him walk me through why I should ever play War Machine again in a war, in a universe where Riot Quest exists. And I'm I'll, I will listen. I will be open minded. So there will definitely be some return. They're holding on, and <clears throat> the guys who love it still love it, and that's good. <clears throat> Until the company goes under. And it may not. They're doing a lot of stuff. I mean, they're dedicated to Kickstarter to get stuff out so they don't have to take any chances, which I have another problem with, but that's not the, the point here. So they're yeah. going to keep in it as long as they can and hope they get a good, solid uh, return. I feel you on that, John. But uh, to be honest, if Kickstarter is what keeps 
privateer from going boobs boobs up, I'm all in. I mean, they shouldn't need that kind of capital infusion. They at least have a have their finger on the pulse. They know they need to make sure that there's a way for retailers to get stuff too in the Kickstarter, and they generally have retailer levels. So that's I give them a, I'll give them a partial pass for that because if not, I mean, for fuck's sake, a small company like Weird Miniatures that never has been as big as Private Press manages does not use Kickstarter for their miniature games and they're releasing stuff constantly. So the fuck's your problem? And their stuff's all in plastic, not this rustic bullshit. Um. So, so that's just my opinion. So they're in Riot Quest, and this I think this is indicative of maybe where they're heading. Is in 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 Riot Quest there? I have yet to find a rustic model. It, good. It is either it is either white metal, or it is um, or it's either white metal or it is good resin. No, that's cool. I mean, I I don't mind resin models. They're not my favorite, but then again, these uh, <clears throat> uh, fifteen millimeter BattleTech models I'm getting, or they're not really battle, not BattleTech models. Let's call them. I'm getting from uh, Stratos Minis are resin, and they're pretty good. I mean, the quality of them is really exceptional. Have we seen anything from um, uh, uh, Black Anchor? Black Anchor. No, I don't think they're. I don't think they're around anymore. Really, Black, like, Black Anchor folded up, huh? Well, I mean, I don't think they've done anything that big. I mean, the. I'll be honest. <clears throat> that may be on purpose, and if so, it is a very canny move. This is not the time to try and sell a giant premium resin model for a game you can't easily play during the yeah. during a COVID apocalypse. And I'll be honest with you, I've I've sworn off 120 millimeter base models. So I'm painting. This looks like a disaster, but I'm going to stick with it. This is a. Um, so I'm I'm painting him as a ginger because I think it's cool as a contrast to the 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 black the black brown bear fur. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to darken this. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't don't give up on me yet, folks. It's like if you ever watched any of the uh, Bob Ross uh, Twitch streams. I mean, of course we have. I mean, Bob Ross. So, if you ever watch the the, the community is amazing because every time he like does something, so like, ruined, blew it, he's it's dead, and then and then like he'll do the, it as as Bob always does, saved. Yep. It's it's amazing. It's so much fun to watch. And actually, I like the way that color is coming out because it is even as it stands right now, a very good contrast to everything else. And I think that it's it draws the eyes the eye into the face, which I'm going to attack here in a little bit. Well, also, as it stands right now, the different brown uh, on his uh, his crotch flap also helps, too. It's it's different colors bringing you from the, I don't want to say muted, but from the uh, bland brown, so to speak. It mm -hmm. brings you in something brighter, bring in for the darker stuff. Cool. Uh, Legionnaire says that Dystopian War is coming back. Like, yeah, I heard they got yes. they bought by somebody and coming back. I mean, yes. Cool. I, I, I wish them well and I wish them success. The um, I've heard they've streamlined the hell out of the game, which is something it. Oh my god! I had some dystopian wars. That was yeah, the why most does everyone fucked up the standard system? of of keep it simple, stupid. It was intolerably busy. Yeah, it was, it's a lot of games like that, and that's a problem. I don't I don't I don't think it's worth it. It, it, John, it's not. It's not. That that is. I can sit down and play thirty minutes of of Riot Quest, and then I can play another thirty minutes. And I can play another thirty minutes, or I can play four hours of the original version of that goddamn game. And it was one of the original uh, John Cons had Dystopian Wars. We played a game of Dystopian Wars. And it was the last time I played those models. I was like, I hate this game. I have all these models, and I, I literally hate it. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, and it's a fine line. It's not like you can go like, oh, this game's too complex. This game's not complex enough. No, there's, there is a fine line in there, because I don't play Kings of War, 
because it is really, really too bland and generic. It doesn't have that kind of oomph I want from a game. So. Yep, I get it. <coughs> okay, I need to put a little bit more of this orange back in here and kind of catch that up a little bit. On the bright side, I will be playing some Malifaux when we get back together because Not Brushhead Dave has been all up in the Malifaux. Good. I'm I'm happy for it. I like Malifaux. It's it's a good game. It is, as it stands, one of the best games out of the box. I'd call it probably number two out of the box, in my opinion. What was number one? Number one is Marvel Crisis Protocol. That's because cool. you can play a full 100% game with just the core box. That's a that's a good thing. I mean, uh, that's also why uh, Legion slips to three. Because you cannot play a full game out of the box. Because it is old War Machine number of models, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yep. Battle so box. Just, just about the most... Well, not quite. You, you get to the point... Like, a full game of that is about the limit of what I want from models. Okay. You know... Maybe, maybe 60 models total if you're really going crazy. Mm -hmm. Yep. More likely a bit less. It's a lot better. Yeah, Legionnaire's Explorer Society is what Not Brush Out Dave has, has been interested in. He went and got the uh, book that just came out. It's on the app if you want to look at it on the app. The app's free. All the cards on the app for free. And what what game is that? Malifo. Malifo. Like, their first app cost, like, five bucks, and it was like, yeah, all the cards are on it, that's fine. But the new one is just all the cards, and it was free. Can't argue with that. Cannot at all. I mean, to be fair, I mean, even to GW be, be is... Yeah. <laughs> I actually get that reference. Thank you. Um, GW, their Age of Sigmar one is a dollar a month. A dollar. <laughs> I'm like, you can't even argue with that. You're like... It's a dollar. I ain't even looked at it in the duration of the COVID apocalypse, and I'm still paying them a dollar a month. Probably should think about maybe not, but <laughs> like, I eh. feel yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't hate Age of Sigmar. It has a giant glaring flaw, but other than that, it's still got some fun. Like, it is almost the great, I want a bunch of models, but I want beer and pretzel rules. It is like one or two steps away from that. I think if they would get away from the the convention of the malt, you can double turn. Ah! That's that's it. You triggered me. Sorry. Fucking double turn. Double turn. Yeah, there's no need for no that. No game that allows that can be balanced. I mean, everyone's like, well, you plan for it. like. No, you don't. So I've got to plan for the potential that I might just get my ass whooped. And I have. I'm fully capable of it. That doesn't make the game fun. And it's not about being able to deal with it. It's being, it, it makes the game lesser in my, in my eyes. Yeah. It's, it, it, I, I, I cannot believe that they think that's a good idea. It's funny. It'd be, I mean, if they put that in 40 K, it would be the worst game ever <clears throat> because and the worst thing is, is that people, since they know about the double turn, they build their army. It's like, oh, I want to go second, so I have the chance to double turn on your ass. I, if you've ever watched a video on any wargaming, it's it's literally a discussion. Every time they play Age of Sigmar, it's who's you plan around the double turn, and it's that can't be. Nope, it is unhealthy for a game. It is fine for a game that is purely played for shits and giggles in your basement. But as soon as you start playing with randos in the law in the store, um, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry. Nope. So it's funny, John, with that beard and it being a uh, ginger, he reminds me of an old uh, Marvel Universe character named Mastodon. Okay, I think I've heard of Mastodon. Giant. Yeah, he was part of a uh, DP Seven, and I'm going really deep here, guys. So I apologize if you don't follow. Um, new universe was sort of Marvel's attempt to make a whole new universe of characters. And it started off really well and just went really, really sideways, really, really quick. 
So I think this is interesting. I, I think that it'll improve with a little bit of wash to bring the uh, the, oh, beard, yeah. the beard in, and then I'll probably kind kind of come back and I did a little bit of re re pre shade re pre highlighting, I should say. Um, I think it'll look okay once I get it washed down a little bit. Yeah, I think a good a good wash, and then probably a little bit of uh, 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 lightness back on top of it for the graying. We'll do, we'll do a good work. Yeah. Hey, Dalkazar. Hey, hey, how you doing, buddy? You only missed a couple rants. Ah, you missed an epic one. I would go back to uh, the YouTube's tomorrow after it after we're done. But um, yeah. So I probably should do something about this skin over here while I still have a little bit of the uh, the cardic flesh laying around here, not doing much. No, but that's a that's a really cool model. I'm actually impressed what they've done with it. It's a I <laughs> I really like it. I think it is a, a top top notch oh. model for the Riot Quest um, line. I, the Riot Quest line is literally the most rewarding experience I've had painting. Uh, privateer models. They, they they just are. I mean, it's like paint, everything is a is a um, is a like a warcaster level coolness. Well, I'll tell you what. I might take a look at it uh, if we ever give our fourteen hundred dollar checks. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy. I mean, when I and I'm hoping you can make it to John Con, um, and we'll uh, we'll figure that out when the sky stops trying to kill us. Yeah, uh, the sky stops trying and nature stops trying and. <clears throat> all that shit Open here hoping but um we will we will figure that shit out but um i look you know riot quest is going to play a big role in john con 2021 and don't anybody worry about bringing models because i will have models for people to play with go cool. and we will have by that time probably four maps that we can play and I am, I am absolutely going to sit there, and I would just happily, you know, just teach people. And I think that I think that with Riot Quest, I could probably get a fair number of Milwaukee people to come down. And I'll tell you what; those guys are are wonderful teachers of this game. You know, the Wonkies are are all in on on the Riot Quests, and I am so looking forward to this this the uh, the air stopping killing us so that i can hook up with the wonkies again and 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 play games because they're great people and travis too he's travis i gotta tell you uh hats off to that guy he is uh he has become such a great ambassador for the game and uh you know there was a time when he was kind of a power gamer and uh, i really feel like that that is not who i i and lots lots of props lots of love for travis because he is um He's the kind of guy you want to play a game with these days. And I don't know if that I could always say about that. And I'll tell you what, I don't know that I could always say that about me. I mean, I'll fair, I can't always say that about me. I try, but every once in a while, we all get that sort of competitiveness that gets to us. Yeah, and I think that I've I've found a game with Riot Quest that I I literally I can have fun with. And uh, and 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 I'll say I'll say Monpoc to a certain extent too. But I will say that I think that Riot Quest is just better than Mon- than Monpoc. Oh, for me, just for a, me, just a couple weeks, John. What's Giant that? monkey versus atomic lizard. Holy shit! I'm so fucking excited. Um, yeah, no doubt. We're, we're getting close to that, so let's go ahead and let's shift over to the. I'm very happy, John, with where this has come in, uh, but a single episode. And only thirty minutes. We we did a good bit of talking for yeah, that first did, half an we hour. Did a lot of talking. Um, very excited about where I I was so excited to paint this model because I think that he is just very characterful. And, yeah, he's very uh, cool. And uh, the, I think that the the help that you gave me with the blood with the uh, excuse me the umber umber on the back here and then you know staying with the ginger thing. My Riot Quest has got a very heavily ginger theme. I'm going to tell you what. All the souls got taken by the Infernals. Everybody's got a fucking ginger now. No souls to be found. Um, and uh, it's it's just working out really pretty well right now. So we're gonna we're gonna park this guy. We're gonna get on over here to everybody's favorite section, media section. And I'm gonna stop painting. I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna drink some whiskey. 
and we're going to talk about movies and shit with my boy, John. Boom. Whoa. Fuck. Turn that shit off. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, John. We, t we, we touched on it briefly here. I'm going to try and... What camera is this? Is this... Nope. That's your camera. It's the one you get to see me on. I'm going to move this yep. over here a little bit. All right. So, um, giant... What, what do you want to talk about today? Do you want to talk about the giant lizard versus monkey, or do you want to talk about something different? Oh, we can talk about atomic lizard versus monkey. I am I'm looking forward to it. Um, spoiler: I have not seen the first of the American Godzilla movies, or have I seen uh, Kong Skull Island? But those will both be taken care of this week. I will tell you that. Um, so Charles broke his collarbone. Were you aware of oh. this? No, I was not. Yeah, Jake, uh, Signar, Jake, and uh, and Charles were in fucking idiots, and um, it was not intentional. Uh, but um, the uh, they they bro Charles got his collarbone broken, and he was sitting down on the couch recuperating a little bit, and he had Kong Skull Island up, and I'm here to tell you, yes, they are going to be on HBO Max. They are not currently, though. I checked no. uh, earlier this week. No, not yet. Same day release is what it's going to be. The um, I'm here to tell you that Col Kong Skull Island is about as good as it gets for a monster movie that is not rubber rubber suit. Um, I have a super soft spot in my heart for rubber suit. Oh, of course, monster movies. Uh, but uh, Kong Skull Island is goddamn fun. It is well done, and I think that we are in for a hell of a ride with Atomic Lizard versus Big Ass Monkey. Doing a little bit of chatting there. Um, yeah, I'm clarifying. Yeah, it's cool. Um, the new one will be... I don't think Skull Island and Godzilla are. Um, Skull Island is, I think, on um, on HBO Max. The only reason I say that is because Chuck was watching it. And if it's not there, I can't imagine where it is. I'm going to check. Uh, I, haven't actually, I haven't loaded up my, my login for that yet. Uh, since Wonder Woman 84 apparently was a resounding meh. I haven't had the chance to log that in. And... Uh, but I'm going to do that to check those out this weekend because I want to watch both of them. And then next weekend, uh, I'm watching rewatching King of the Monsters in preparation because it seems like the thing to do. Indeed. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It looks like it's pretty good. Uh, I cannot wait for the team up. Everyone's like, oh, who's going to win? I'm like, yeah, who's going to win? We're going to win because it's going to be a team up. It absolutely, it's going to be a team up. There is no universe. They're selling it hard in these previews. That this is somehow Big Monkey versus Atomic Lizard. It is not. It is it's Big not. Big Monkey and Giant Lizard kill some shit and fuck some shit up together. Because yep. they're gonna be high fiving each other. It's gonna be super sweet. They're gonna be like they're gonna be like hanging off with the rope. They're gonna be tag tagging each other in. It's gonna be super sweet. It's gonna be the best. There is no universe where they let Godzilla be a bad guy Godzilla again. No. Not going to happen. No. The most they're going to get is like Godzilla King of the Monsters, where he's like, yeah, he's force nature, but he's also of the old Confucius school of if you don't start none, won't be none. Oh, no. Do not fuck with. Oh, my God. I so want Gamera to show up at some point. It's never going to happen. But. Probably not. But you never know. <sighs> I mean, the people who make these movies, I, I rewatched. Uh, um, so I don't watch Cinema Sins anymore because that, that they've become sort of hate-filled and not as fun nature as they used to be. I watch Cinema Wins, where it's everything great about a movie. And sometimes the movie is so terrible, I don't, don't think it has a defense. Yep. It's turned me around on one or two. But his uh, everything great about Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is awesome because he brings up all the points of how, like, they call it Mothra. They call it Rodan. I mean, they could have used a change those names, but they're like, no, this is their names. Mm -hmm. Ghidorah. I mean... And then when the people, when they're there, like Mothra shows up, Mothra's music is playing a little bit in the background. Mm -hmm. And the twins, which you don't even notice in the movie unless you're really looking for it, the two Asian uh, ladies, there's one with Mothra and the other one in the main cast, and they're twins. You're like, holy fuck. Yeah. No, it's, it's, 
It's so well done. They love it there. It's so well done. Yeah. I, yeah, I, so... I'm looking forward to it. These guys really love this stuff. Yeah, but the, the people who are making these movies genuinely get it. It, it did bring up another point uh, of, of a movie remake that I think the director of this, or the director of King of the Monsters, I think it was, is going to do. Um, that is media section relevant. And it's a remake of a little-known Nicolas Cage, John Travolta movie called Face Off. They're redoing Face Off? Yes. I can't explain it. Don't ask me to. I don't know. I'm not sure on what planet that's like needs to be done, but apparently it's being done. No. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I... no, no. No, no. It's It's like the quintessential John Woo movie. It's just leave it alone. That's like that that's like ordering up a sequel or a reboot of Buckaroo Banzai. No. I mean, not to say I wouldn't be in there for it, but yes, indeed. No. No, 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 no. Stop it. So, uh, I'm looking forward to those for entirely different reasons. And, you know, John, we're almost, were you aware, we're only about a month out or so from the Snyder Cut of Justice League, which has become a meme already. Help walk me through what the fuck exactly the the Snyder Cut is because it, they're they're well, they're talking it up on HBO Max like it's a different oh fucking movie. So, and I'm like, I uh, saw during this the filming of Justice League. I think uh, Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide, which is terrible. Oh, and so he had to step away. So they brought Joss Whedon in, which is why some of those character interactions seem so, you know, what we're used to from Avengers and all. And I feel like it brought it up. It was. A, I feel like Justice League was a field goal. Yeah, it's not I, like the greatest movie, but yeah, it was fine. I enjoyed it. My mom enjoyed it. It was barometers. It's a, but it's an action movie. It's fine. There are fans. Zach Zack Snyder has fans like, like, like a cult almost, sort of like that cult of personality type fans. Are they gonna? Or like, are they gonna well, darken? Yeah, was, oh they, God, yeah. Are they gonna it's darken rated the movie? R. Are they gonna darken the shit out of the movie? Oh yeah, it's rated R. It's it's rated R. It's like not. It's like very desaturated. Superman's gonna come back in his black suit because. Oh my God, I, I am looking forward to this in the entirely different way. They are gonna. It is gonna be a motherfucking train wreck. Why does DC allow this to keep on happening? I because they don't care anymore. They just want to put movies out. They don't care. This is this is handful of reshoots, some other stuff. We're gonna make a ton of money from it from HBO for them putting them on HBO Max. And HBO Max is like, we're gonna be people in the door to see this shit show, whether it's good or bad. Wow. It's pure business decision. So I am, like I said, looking forward to it, expecting it to be terrible. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure. Yeah, nor am I. Yeah. Um, no one. Is. I'm. I'm not sure either. Um, so looking looking to see how that is and uh, did I tell you that someone posted there is a, there's of course the Martha scene in in a uh, Batman vs Superman and someone posted how you know this is a really poignant and deep scene and if you don't like it you just don't get it I'm like no no sir it is not deep it may be kind of intent tended to be poignant but it was poorly done. In fact, it was so poorly done, poor Ben Affleck had to do the same thing he fucking did in a movie a fucking decade ago and did it better the first time because he did the same thing in fucking Daredevil. The holy shit, I'm the monster. And you know what? It played better in the Daredevil movie. And that should be enough said about that. And you want the mastermind behind this, Zack Snyder, who makes amazing scenes but not good movies. Yeah. Like, honestly, of what I've seen of his, I mean, I guess, okay, I'll give him a pass on Watchmen. Watchmen is actually decent. But that's purely adapted source material. It is also still much better scenes. You're not seeing, like, you don't necessarily want to watch the movie from start to end all the time. You're like, I want to see that scene. I, I will not give him a pass for Watchmen because he misses the point of the whole fucking book. I think it gets the point across a little bit, but I, I think it does stray a bit a bit far afield. It's not the same 
They're the same punch. There's there's a lot to believe that that is a comic book that cannot be brought to the movie screen because of the way that it interplays within the the comic book and i don't i don't know <laughs> the H, the hbo series is better than that fucking movie but you know if i look at the movie i give it a solid two maybe creeping like parts of it are two and a half parts of it are one and a half I'd say a solid two. It gets two a full, shot of Kraken. For it me. gets a full shot of Kraken for Doctor Manhattan's dick. I, I try to forget that. Yep. There's a. Well, so now you're up to three. So there you have it. No, <laughs> it three shots of Kraken Fair. is no longer a good movie. Fair. I mean, but yeah. So we're looking forward to that. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll find. Uh, I I think that we will be happier with large monsters beating the fuck out of things. Oh. Uh, if you're willing to put money on it, I mean, Monkey vs. Atomic Lizard is going to be a better movie. Oh, yeah. But speaking of better superhero movies. Speaking of them. I watched one this week. In fact, yesterday. Yeah. Um, with all this hubbub, and I don't know if you've heard about it, I don't know if I'm going to touch on it, about Joss Whedon, and apparently he is not the best human being. I have not or, heard Scuttlebutt, best... but that's, I'm sorry A to couple of Buffy actors came out and said that he's not great. Okay. That he was basically a piece of shit to them. Okay. People are defending him. It doesn't matter one way or the other. You know, I'll let it's it fine. let that go. We'll figure he's it out. He's not really doing anything anyway, so it's not like you're going to ruin his career that he's not having. So who cares? Yep. I mean, it may be true. It may not be true. We'll see. But, but I watched the Avengers again because just because, even if he's proven to be a piece of shit, just because he's a piece of shit does not mean he didn't make something that we love. Mm-hmm. And loving that thing does not support him in any way, shape, or form anymore. It's not like, oh, you know, he's going to keep getting jobs because you keep loving Avengers. No. It's, they're, 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 you can divorce them. It's all good. Yep. Uh, yeah, Talcazar, there's a lot of lag. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's been crappy. Not our fault. I've been reflecting on here. Yeah, it's, it's I definitely blame, Twitch. I blame Texas. Could be Texas. Yeah. But anyways, I watched the Avengers again, and I'm here to tell you it's still great. Yeah. Would you like to? I mean, would you like to talk about a new movie that's pretty fucking amazing? Oh, absolutely, by all means. Okay. I mean, because we can talk about Avengers until our ass drops off. But I'm, um, I'm here to tell you that Greenland is a good, borderline great action movie. Oh. There's an entire subgenre to the Earth is fucked. And we're all going to die. And uh, and this is of that subgenre. And the ostensibly... Gerard Butler. Oh, shit. This movie is disturbing, terrifying, and fun all at the same time. And I think that is a great combination. If you can be... It, it is disturbing because it is close to home it is fun because the action is thick and furious it is terrifying because you can relate closely enough with the actors and the decisions they have to make and the decisions they do make frustrate the fuck out of you sometimes but that is good storytelling greenland um Greenland is better deep impact. Better um better all of the better Armageddon. Oh better God. better Armageddon's a movie that is amazing in all the right and wrong ways at the same time. Yeah, Armageddon is its own subgenre of movies. But it's uh, it is it is better than that. It is the um I'm going to give you the quick elevator pitch. Um, a comet is going to strike the Earth, and the uh, but it's not one of them nice all-in-one kind of comets. It's like the realistic kind. That's all bunches of pieces, and the society is being sold that it's all going to burn up in the atmosphere. Until the notifications start going out via cell phone and 
to their individual televisions that you have been selected and you need to report to X now. Oh, and, 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 it, it, and it touches on just the right technologies that are being picked up and, and, and notifying these people and only select people and everyone else is oblivious which is really disturbing because yeah. it's hyper realistic and 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 then we get to watch society crumble as we are le- as we are want to do because when they did this they didn't take into account that people sometimes gather together in groups so some people got the, got selected some people didn't and um, so in case you don't know, folks, there is a seed bank in Greenland. OK, Greenland, upon, other than being Donald Trump's like favorite thing he wants to buy recently, is there, it is like the, the, the hub of like if society dies, this is where we put the seeds because it will be it's far enough away from everything that it should be OK. And um there's a planet killer in in amongst the comet debris, and um, and then they finally announce to the general populace that y'all got 24 hours. This is this is coming. Ain't nobody gonna survive. I think I'd rather be oblivious. And they find out about the the these these people who have been selected, and I. And society reacts as you would expect society to react. It's it's you could easily say this is a zombie movie. Yeah, I um, can see you talking about that. It it might be a zombie movie, but and I don't think it'd be as as uncomfortable if it was a zombie movie because you could just shoot zombies. You can't just shoot it's, people. It is far more disturbing than a zombie movie because you could identify with everyone that's making the decisions that they're making. And you can put yourself in their shoes and go, I might make that same decision. And that is a morally fucked up place to be. Yeah, I mean, we can sit here and say, like, oh, I would just, you know, stoically accept my fate. And I might just. I'm occasionally pessimistic. But, man, it's tough. I will tell you, in the last 20 minutes of this movie, I I looked at Belinda and I said, Belle, if this were to take place, I would like for you and I to go to Lake Michigan, which is three miles away and there are there are benches it's a very picturesque lake it's a great lake they even called it so and i would like to sit there and 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 if this is the end i want to be there with you because i want this i want to end together we we literally had that discussion during this movie about how we wanted it to go, and we'd have Foofer with us, and we'd we would try to get the cats together if we could. Probably not, because cats don't like to be herded. But we would have Foofer with us, and um, and then, then then we would just end, because that's what was going to happen. It is probably my favorite disaster movie, in spite of all of the infuriating decisions that are made that you yell at the television for them not to make but you would make the same fucking decisions because it's human greenland i cannot zero shots of kraken might be might be the best of its genre wow so so many hey malori fuck yeah malorian thank you for being here buddy i got it Hats off. I'm going to give a shout out to Malorian because dude is keeping the fucking flame alive. Bless his heart. Um, and oh. no, don't be, don't be depressed. Malorian. It's a, uh, it, it, they, they overcome, they do this, they do that. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but there's a lot of human spirit going on in this movie. And, um, uh, folks, in, in case you are not aware, Malorian is doing shows weekly. I mean, good, high-quality production value, like War Machine talk. Bless your heart, Malorian, for being here. Thank you. 
Um, you want to give him a shout out in the chat? He's in the YouTube's. I oh, he's in the YouTube's. He's okay, in the YouTube's. Like, I don't see him. Sorry, he's in the YouTube's. Oh, did you see Scott McAvoy's in uh, McAvoy's in uh, the Facebooks? Oh, Scott McAvoy, how are you, buddy? Scotty, he's up there in. Uh, hey, Scott, in uh, in March, I'm going to be up in Green Bay. We should probably get together. Um, Scotty, uh, it runs a beautiful uh, catering. And I think he's still got a little bit of a restauranty thing going, even in the COVIDs. Um, tremendous chef. Tremendous chef. If you're in the, the greater Door County area, you look up that fella. And uh, he's uh, super legit and super sweet. Um, I just follow your lead and keep, nah, fuck, Malarian, you're, you're OG, baby. You're as OG as we've ever been. Um, and I, I love the, the Phoenix uh, on your uh, on your channel when you when you start your new things that's that's a beautiful thing uh but uh, uh so anyway uh greenland highly recommend uh the the version of restream that we have john i don't get the uh i don't get the facebook quotes when people post shit i don't uh, get a chance i don't see that in the restream but um uh, gotcha well i'm gonna Post uh, Mr. Malorian's uh, YouTube channel here. Yeah, and, uh, for sure, guys. Get on Twitch. over there. Get on over to Mr. Malorian. If you're if you're if you're living the dream on on War Machine and Hordes, he is keeping the fires burning. There's no two ways about it. Um, and still doing analysis of the things. And I'll be honest with you, John. I've gone and and tried to follow battle reports and stuff like that. Apparently, if you don't have Archons in your list, you're just a chump. And I have no idea hmm. what they do. They seem badass. Um, I'd like to paint a Dunian Archon if I could ever buy one. They're always out of stock, but probably because they're so good. They're they're good and they are, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna probably call an end to the episode here pretty quick. Yeah, I didn't watch anything new, just the Avengers. No, that's yeah. cool. Oh, I've been feeling things. it a lot, so I'm gonna sort of try and go out of my Green, way to watch more stuff. Gre Greenland, zero Greenland. shots of Kraken. Get on over there. It's a it's a fucking great movie. I bought it. Fuck, that's how good it is. I'm using fuck a lot, and that's whatever. Can't I can't be held excited. responsible. It's all good. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm actually really super excited that Malorian's watching. To be honest with you, because I got I got mad respect for the boy. Yeah, I mean, except for that time he brought on manual laugh. class, but that's fine. We're not gonna start. A, we're not gonna start drama. How so. did? Wow. How did that make it on Twitter? Holy crap. What what what, what what happened on Twitter? No, it's just someone uh, liked something and showed up my feed, and it is not oh. uh, not work friendly, not works, not safe for work. Well, don't that? don't do that. So um, yeah. anyway, we're gonna start the music, and we're gonna end start the show. The and um, so on behalf of myself, Menoth John, and of course the wind beneath my wings, Mister John Spencer, you know you love him. He's in the catbird seat. Um, if you get a duty and archon, be ready to rebalance it. The big hammer is metal and off to the side. It's all good. It's all good. We'll figure this shit out. We'll do like do some structures, put some I beams, all that kind of shit. Anyway, so on behalf of myself, the wind beneath my wings, and Mr. Malorian, I'm Menoth John. We'll be back in two weeks, dude. If you're not watching the Mothership RPG, you are fucking up. Get here next Wednesday. We're going to be doing the RPG. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your night as I sit here and figure out how to get back to the other screen. Good night, everybody. Good night. Production values. <laughs> we have some. Fucking production values. Oh, oh Rich. <sighs> All right. Good night, everybody. For reals. For reals. Mr. Malorian is doing the best podcast about War Machine and Hordes right now, period. End of story. <laughs>